Today I'm going to paint in the style of Rembrandt. Hi everybody, this is Steve Elliott here. This is the first episode of my new YouTube series and I'm going to try and paint in the style of Rembrandt. So you need to stay till the end of the video to see if I actually achieve it. So the first bit's the easy bit. I'm just selecting the colours uh, off the original Rembrandt painting. So I make myself a palette and then I delete that picture from uh, Procreate. I'm working in Procreate, by the way. And then you'll see I've made a composite photo. <clears throat> I did that in um, Affinity Photo, where I took the Rembrandt painting and the picture that I'm going to try and paint in the style of Rembrandt. And I put them together, uh, one on top of the other, so I could view them in a split screen and I could just sort of toggle between the two just by sliding them up and down. So that's how I set it up so I could see um, the style I wanted to paint in and um, the picture that uh, I'm going to copy or, or paint. So I started with Rembrandt because I thought his style suits me anyway. I kind of leaned towards that. Rembrandt, he was alive in the 1600s. He was born on the 15th of July. And he was a Dutch painter and a printmaker. And he specialised in a variety of subjects. Well, in fact, he had a wide range of subjects, including portraits and landscapes and biblical and historical scenes. So uh, that intrigued me about him as well. So um, I had a really close look at the brushwork. Um, so I zoomed in on his original painting and... It was just so subtle. The um, He doesn't seem to blend his colours at all, yet there's no definite edge to the actual um, paint. So his face just looks like a photograph. Absolutely superb. So um, I start off just putting on broad strokes, as you can see there now, very uh, broad strokes. And then I use the blending tool to um, sort of blend them a little bit and try, but try and keep it still very, um, I was going to say painterly, but so that you can see every tiny brush stroke. And he's overlaying colours all the time. You can see, if you zoom in, you can see yellows next to warm oranges and uh, reds and browns and uh, just really, really subtle painting. And I love the palette of the sort of um, browns and earthy colours that he's got. Um, his portraits were considered some of his greatest triumphs, really. And that's probably because he wasn't vain. And he did just paint himself as an ordinary guy, no frills or anything, just dead down to earth. And that, that's something else I like about him as well. So, if you have a favourite painter that you would like me to paint in the style of, please put it in the comments below. Just write the name of the artist. I'll do the searching for the images and such. And if I pick the artist that you like, I'll give you a mention in the video so you'll get credited for that. Um, I have to say, the video that I made as the introduction to this series, when I said I was like really buzzing for it, after I made it, it took me about a week to actually post it on YouTube because I started to have doubts. I was thinking, do you know what? Can I do this? Um, am I just going to completely make a, a clown of myself and not be able to achieve anything that um, looks like uh, what I um, hope it's going to turn out like? But in the end, I thought, you know what? Go for it. So I did post the video and when I started this painting, I was really scared. Uh, and it was sort of pressure that I put on myself, really, because I'm not painting it for anybody. I'm not selling it. Uh, although the person in the painting, I did ask him if he would be okay for me to paint his portrait. He was well up for it. He owns a little uh, micro pub in Castle Donington. And it's called the Checkered Flag. It's a great little place. It's um, it just like the front room of somebody's house in a little terraced house where he's 
you could probably get about 20 people in and it's absolutely crammed to the rafters. And he only sells draft beer, real ales. Uh, it really is nice, nice atmosphere, no music. You can just sit and chat. And he's there standing behind this tiny little bar, uh, measuring out his glasses of wine with a little measuring cup, which you can see in this portrait. So um, I don't even know if he's seen this portrait yet. I, I've posted it on Facetube and I called in the checkered flag last night, but he wasn't there, so I didn't get to get his feedback. But I've had a lot of nice feedback from people that do know him and friends of his, so that's cool. So anyway, uh, this guy's name's um, Robert, but we uh, affectionately call him Bert for some reason. I don't know why, uh, but we do. Um, I think one of the big problems I had with this painting was um, getting a likeness of him, and I, I, I really seemed to struggle with that and to get his eyes exactly how I want. <laughs> you can see, look, I actually paint his eye out like he's had it uh, shot out in an episode of The Walking Dead or something, and then I have to repaint it back in again. But I do get there in the end, and um, I'm loving... I, I have learnt a lot already from this one painting. When I've been painting portraits before, I sort of go into shadows and, and use dark colours, and I was looking at the Rembrandt painting, and he's using sometimes almost bright red for uh, putting the eyelids in, where the... So I suppose the blood uh, in the eyelids sort of really visible, and you, you can see that, so I've started to use... Um, much brighter colours in the shadows than I would do normally. You can see on the nose I've got this sort of red-brown colour going off and um, sort of just picking out little highlights of, of uh, wrinkles with a much brighter colour, but not white. He does use... He seems to be white. I guess it's not white if you look really close, but just with the driest of brush, he just strokes these highlights of white on the the painting and uh that looks just just absolutely stunning so you know as well as just try struggling to get anything like um uh, rembrandt because you know i'm not i'm no rembrandt am i uh so it is an exercise this is just an exercise in me trying to paint um like another artist i have got i have to say I do have my own style and I consider that I paint in two styles, one in watercolour and uh, a different style if I'm, I'm working in oils. But I think you could you could pick out my work and, and tell it apart um, from other uh, painters. But I don't think you should stay in a rut and you should always, always be pushing yourself and trying to extend yourself. I think learning it's lifelong you can't suddenly say i've now achieved what I'm, i want to do and i can paint and it's the same with music or whatever you can always get better and you can always learn something so that's why i'm doing this i thought it'd be a really fun thing for other people to see and and see if i crash and burn or actually achieve anything like um you know what i'm setting out out to do or or not um so that's why I'm doing it. It's a learning experience. And I, I had so much fun painting this uh, that I can't wait to do the next one. Um, I want us to talk about Instagram as well. If you go on Instagram, you can, you'll get to see the finished painting before I make the video. Now, if you um, don't want a spoiler, or well, this is a spoiler alert, if you don't want a spoiler, and see the finished painting before the end of the video, then I wouldn't be uh, going on Instagram to look at my feed. But if you want to find out what I'm going to be painting next, and you want to see the finished painting before I release the video, you can find that on Instagram and Twitter, and on my Facebook page as well, I suppose. So there are ways you can see uh, what I'm going to do uh, before... Uh, the video is released but if you don't want to see them I suggest that you kind of avoid 
my feed on Instagram and such because I'm kind of doing a two-part thing where if you go on Instagram, you can try and guess the artist that I'm going to paint uh, or that I've painted in the style of. And and the last one I put up had some great feedback and people uh, did guess that it was a Rembrandt and others were guessing artists that I'd never heard of that paint very similar to Rembrandt. So that was cool because, again, I've started learning now about different artists that I hadn't seen before or studied. So that was great for me. So there's that. If you On Instagram, Facebook and, and Twitter, it's a kind of a different series where you can guess the artist. But on YouTube, it's do I achieve what I'm setting out to do or do I crash and burn? Anyway, Rembrandt, um, he never left his, he, he didn't travel much, he never left his uh, country of origin, uh, but he did study the Italian masters like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, Michelangelo and Raphael, and you can see that in his, his work, but he didn't travel much, so I do feel I have an affinity with him, because I'm not big into travelling, and uh, my daughters get on at me because I um, don't, travel a lot and I'm very happy not to I like England and I like or, or Great Britain and I like being in this country and I love the light I love the way uh, it affects landscapes and and scenes and things and there's such a wealth of things for me to paint here I don't feel as though I need to be traveling to uh, do what I want so I tend not to uh, travel a lot which is probably not a good thing, really. But there you go. I'm not big into travelling. Perhaps I should travel a little bit more. Um, I had a lot of fun painting this glass and trying to get the ice in there and still consciously all the time thinking about um, the style that I was I was trying to paint in, this, this Rembrandt style. And... Um, I kind of got a little bit carried away with the style in in some places and forgot about the form. If you look at the hand on the right, you can't see that now because I'm working on, on the bottle. But if you look at the hand on the right, it looks a little bit clumpy and uh, a bit wide. So I did change that, which you won't see in the video. I made I put the video together. And then I was looking at the painting and I thought, you know what, that the hand that you can see now, it's it doesn't look right. It looks a bit cartoon-like. So I did amend that. You will see it in the, the finished painting that I present at the end of the video because I, um, I put the finished one in it, but you won't see me painting it. But I just pretty much used the crop tool to move the fingers about. There you see the hand now. It seems a bit wide. So I did... Um, change that a bit i think the only thing the only tool that i used here that was would be different from painting conventionally was the um lasso tool to uh, continually move things around because i did think that um not drawing out and and just being able to, to paint uh paint sort of abstract shapes and and find the form kind of makes me a little bit lazy with the observation i i don't it's not the painting bit that makes me lazy it's the fact that i can move things with a lasso tool that i think if i don't get it exactly right it doesn't matter because i can move it around so i think i need to pay start paying a bit more attention to the the detail and the composition of the shapes and where they go uh a little bit earlier on than start to um, find them and feel my way as I'm going because I did struggle a little bit with this that uh, I kept having to move things around because I hadn't got them right in the first place. So if I was painting that, you know, for real, that would be quite a um, lengthy task, I suppose. Um, at this point... I'm sort of happily painting away, but I'm thinking the hands um, are sort of 
dominating the painting and they are taken away from the face so there's there's sort of a battle between which is the dominant part of the painting the face or the hands and the glass and i wanted it to be the face so you can see here i'm starting to um, darken up the hand uh, and take that really bright highlight out of it and i'm, I'm still sort of looking at the uh, rembrandt picture by the way, I uh, didn't manage to record the screen capture, so I had to use the Procreate export for this bit. So that's why you can't see me picking the tools and things and the um, Rembrandt painting that I'm referencing. So I'm sort of putting in highlights in the bottle as well. Um, but when I finished it, I thought, it's okay, but it's not, I don't think... At this stage, I'm quite getting that Rembrandt look. It hasn't got the kind of light that there's in the Rembrandt. It, the colours are there because that's easy because I just selected the colours off the painting. And I, th I mean, the brush stroke is crude compared to Rembrandt. It is. If you zoom in, there's nothing like um, the detail and, and the subtleness and the attention that Rembrandt's got in there but I'm kind of working not making excuses but I, I knocked this up in you know maybe six hours but then I put a glaze over the old thing look and then just lifted some color out of uh, the hands just to tweak it a little bit and that finishes my Rembrandt painting in the style of I'll let you decide if you think I achieved it or not. I love painting it. I can't wait to do the next one. So thank you for joining me in this video, staying with me right until the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. It's much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I have so many videos that I'm going to make and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.